Can we all agree we're over? We're just, we're done with September. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about one, what were our September harvests? Two, what are kind of some of the things going on in the vegetable garden? And three, of course, we're going to talk about things that you should be considering doing in the month of October. Because I think the biggest thing is we really need to talk about with the change of weather from the hurricane and the fact that we maybe lost some ground in September. What are we going to do? If it wasn't one thing, it was like a totally different thing. Gardening in September was hard. Oh my gosh. If it wasn't for the absolute, like, I don't even know how many inches of rain. I, does anyone know how many inches of rain did we get in September? Like even before the hurricane, we had gotten so much rain, killing seedlings left and right. Everyone was struggling. And then we got a hurricane. And so if you still have a garden, a lot of us lost stuff not surprising you all know me like we're gonna try to make the best of whatever situation we're in so no matter where you're at in this whole spectrum of just like September sucked and how much sucking it did it's gonna vary a lot for us Floridians so if you're in a place right now where you're ready to get going and start on doing things again for the month of October then that's what this video is here for if you're ready I'm gonna give you some ideas of things that you can get started we are gonna talk about what our results are for the month of September and kind of what are some of the things that we expect to be harvesting in the month of October. So that can help you, if you're ready, get back on track to doing what you can do. If you're not ready to be back on track because we just went through a lot, that's okay. Remember, you can always hang out and have some fun and just not think about all the things that are going on because there's a lot going on in Florida right now. So let's get into it. Let's talk harvest numbers. So let's get into our harvest numbers. So in 2020, I was able to harvest 10 pounds. I honestly don't remember what I probably harvested. Maybe it was sweet potatoes or something in October of 2020. So I got 10 pounds then. 2021, only a pound. Wasn't really much going on last year at this time of year. But, but this year, our grand total is 35 pounds. What? I feel like that's a huge improvement. And there were a couple plants that really were the ones that helped drive it. So taking a look at our notes, I know I'm like running out of space. Anyone else on this? Oh, and this is the 2022 Wild Floridian Garden Planner. Um, I am working on the 2023 one. It's gonna be even better. I'm super psyched for the changes that we're doing, but let's focus. So 35 pounds, so who was the big driver? So the biggest driver was pumpkins. You know, as a Floridian, we are so off from like what Northerners do. So to be harvesting, pumpkins in September and actually I probably would have let those go another week and they would have been harvested in October um, it's kind of crazy and if you're wondering what variety it was seminal pumpkins seminal pumpkins have been an amazing crop if you have not added it and you're considering doing pumpkins I would totally totally recommend seminal pumpkins I got my seeds from Daisy the good that's David the good's daughter um, but there are other places you can pick them up too they were slow to start but man have they just been like a champ like they kind of die back but then they come back again and then they die back and then they come back again and i am ending up with so many pounds so this month we got in september we got 18 pounds of pumpkin we're getting a lot of pumpkin <laughs> i'm getting to the point i'm like do, do i need all this pumpkin I, I this is a lot <laughs> We got a lot inside the house, but we've been picking away at it. We, Ben's been trying new dishes um, and he's trying some other new ones because of our number two crop for the month, which was 10 pounds of loofah. 
This one, I had no idea whether I was supposed to harvest it young, old, what. Like, mostly what you see out there is people who let it go dry so you can use it, like, you know, for your shower and as a food, but I've heard that you can use it as zucchini. And y'all have been giving me tips on whether, when to harvest it. But because of the hurricane, I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna harvest it in all the phases and we'll just try it and see what's worked. So I know this week, I, I can't really talk about it yet, but this week Ben's working on a chili dish that uses seminal pumpkins and he's gonna try to use some of the young uh, loofahs as a zucchini substitute. And we're gonna just try it. That's why I told him, I'm like, we'll just try and we'll just see what happens and I will as we try them I will let you know what seems to be working for us but I love all the tips that y'all have been giving me so continue to give tips for those of us who have, are newer to the loofah um there are some that are older and I think we'll get to use them as sponges you know in the shower we'll have lovely exfoliated skin um if you don't know what a loofah is which I when talking to my family a lot of them are like I don't, I don't know what a loofah is I'm like you know that like plasticky fluffy thing that you find in Publix right and you like scrub it with soap but like this is like the natural version of it so I'm excited to try out both this and and this <laughs> so 10 pounds and the thing is is that when the hurricane hit a lot of the loofah leaves looked really sad and I realized there were even more loofahs hiding in the arch than I even harvested because that's one of the challenges I'm finding between the Puerto Rican black beans and the loofahs they are so like it's great because the arches have looked great not right now they kind of look a little sad because of the hurricane but whatever um but they are so full it's sometimes hard to find like the loofahs and the bean pods because they're just like everywhere so loofah 10 pounds and after that then well we had our black sapote fall down and i we grabbed the four pounds of black sapote fruit and now if you've never heard of black sapote this is also called chocolate pudding fruit i've never I'm, i've been so excited to try it i don't know if any of these are going to actually ripen but we have them because we had to cut down the tree because it fell over. So uh, the stump has been pushed back up if it ends up re-sprouting. Cool. If it doesn't, we'll put something else in there. But, I, but I've been wondering if black sapote, and any of you who are used to doing uh, black sapote or mame sapote or any of the sapotes, I heard from my friend who grew up down in Miami that the mames take 24 months. Um, from the time that they flower, but they flower every year. So you always are getting mames once it gets going. And I started last year getting flowers and fruit. And so I was thinking that they might be kind of a similar process with black sapote, but I don't know. So it looked like some of the fruit probably came from last year into this year. It does not look as big as it I've seen online. So I'm not really sure. So if you know, I would love to know. <laughs> I really have lots of questions this month. I'm like, I don't know. Um, so just those three crops together brought in 32 of the 35 pounds and then we got a little bit of this and that so we got seven crops in total which saved us approximately $40 though I don't have a number a dollar number in for loofah so you know whatever um, so that number will go up uh, which leads us to 461 pounds of harvest so far this year and $843 of savings at a minimum from the grocery store which is really exciting but that is the past and here's the reality is we kind of, we are where we are. The garden is what it is. So if you put in starts and they didn't survive the hurricane or the deluges of rain, that may have happened, right? Or just like me, I lost some of my seed starts just because of like, I had to shove in my garage, they weren't getting light, they didn't get water and a couple of them died off. Stuff happened, stuff happened. So let's just be where we're at and move forward. So that got me thinking about, you know, if you were trying to reset your vegetable garden, what would you do right now? And here's one of the things is that the weather is like winter weather right now. Is it similar for y'all? Um, it has been in the sixties in the morning here in zone 10 a, and that is very odd for October. Very, very odd for us, especially at the beginning of October, but it's cooler and that's just is what it is. So while you could maybe get some tomato plants in or peppers or one of the warm weather crops, I honestly just feel like we need to just kind of let go of the warm weather crops because just looking at the forecast over the next couple of weeks and what's probably going to be happening, you know, what happened with the hurricane, a lot of stuff happened with the hurricane, but from a weather standpoint is a lot of deep water got kicked up, which is cooling the water around Florida down further than it normally would be and that what that's going to do is it's going to plus whatever is happening with the wind systems is it's just it's keeping florida a lot cooler than it would in october and that's just not going to be ideal temperatures as we head into november for warm weather crops now if you have seeded stuff don't go pulling anything out no stopping if you, if you got warm weather crops i got tomatoes over here i got peppers doing things behind me just let them keep going okay 
But if you're thinking about seeds, what you may want to consider is let's just skip ahead to cold weather crops. You know, and if you've been following my tips all along, you you know I've been telling you like just grab the cold weather crops because the seed packets are gonna go. So I've been doing that throughout the year as I see stuff, you know, because I impulse buy. Like, let's be real. But I, I've been stocking up. So I wanted to give you guys a couple ideas of things to think about for October that should be working with the temperatures we're getting. And one of the things to be thinking about is beets. Now remember with beets, you can eat both the root and the leaves. So you got kind of like a two for, I call these two for one plants is that, because even if you never get a really good, like nice root growth, you still can eat the leaves. So it's like, it's never, uh, it never lacks value to put it in your garden. Um, so you can throw those beets in salads or smoothies. We, we've thrown the leaves in smoothies. It always changes them to a very interesting purple. And I can always tell, cause I'm always like, Ben, something's different with the smoothie. He's like, yeah, I put the beet leaves in. So beets, great one. Um, and they're pretty fast. So depending if the weather kind of gets a little bit back to how it normally is, like hotter, you may have make some really good ground and it will, these should be okay. Another one to consider is your onions. So whether you're green onions, like so they call them bunching onions, or you do like a proper onion, those would be great to start right now. And remember with this one, if you're sitting here going like, well, I don't have seeds, go buy some green onions from Publix, go use them in a dish, and then just take the bottom parts, this root part, and just shove them in the ground. And they will grow green onions for you for like, depending how well you establish them, I've had mine up to a year, so you can get some really, really good return on your investment when it comes to green onions. So I would definitely recommend green onions. And with all the wind that we got, it seems like, I don't know, you tell me, the, the amount of bugs out here biting and the cooler weather has just brought down like the pest pressure a lot faster than it would have. So you may want to consider things like lettuce. Uh, definitely maybe a time to consider doing some lettuces, a cut and come again. We like to do a lot more cut and come again, especially kind of early and late in the season, because if we do get a lot of buggy boos, you know, we can cut off the leaves and cut and cut and cut. And so if they get a leaf or two, it's not a big deal versus when you're trying to wait for that whole head, you know, you just, the odds increase that they're gonna get in there and start creating problems. And then now you kind of lose the whole harvest versus if you have like a lot of heads and you're just like cutting and cutting and cutting. I like cut and come again because also it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Cause that's sometimes one of the challenges. And I see that a lot with the Northern gardeners. It's kind of like all or nothing versus I like having a lot of crops where it's like, yeah, you can get a little bit of tomatoes. You can get a little bit of lettuce. You can get a little bit of peppers. You can make stuff during that week. And then you can do that a few days later. And then a few days later, instead of being like, you have 30 pounds of lettuce, what are you doing with this? And now you got a problem. <laughs> like, so consider finding seeds that are cut and come again. You can go get starts from places like Home Depot and Lowe's. I did still see them. They are expensive. Let's be clear. They are like $5 per plant. Now, if you are a decent grower of things, this may still be like, okay, ideal, ideal is like start from seed. That's gonna be your cheapest. But if you don't have seeds and you wanna grab one of those starter plants, it's still better financially than buying bag lettuce. I know David was doing a video, which I totally was watching, and he was talking about seed starting and the expenses, and he had some good ideas, which I like some of David's ideas. Um, but in like the hierarchy of like cost savings, like best is you start with seeds. Next is actually doing starts, as long as the starts don't get way too expensive, though they're edging into the point where it's kind of like, I don't know. And then it's like buying whole heads of lettuce that aren't really processed at Publix, and then you got your like cut up bag lettuce, like that's going to be your most expensive per pound. So cheapest per pound, start with seeds. But if you don't start with seeds and you are a big lettuce eaters, actually buying starts can actually be cost effective. It's just not that cost effective. So if you're feeling like I don't have seeds or you're kind of nervous about starting with seeds, you could get some starts. I grabbed some starts just so I could try a different variety and also snack, snack, snatch those seeds when you're done. Now, another one kind of in the lane of lettuce, but not lettuce. And it's, I kind of consider it a warm weather crop because it's kind of the tail or the leading end of warm weather crops but it doesn't really stay into the cold weather crop season and that's spinach so you may want to consider throwing some spinach in if you're especially if you're like a big buyer of baby spinach leaves which we buy quite a bit so this one would be one to consider adding into the our garden area another one or two or three or four is brassicas so brassicas is a huge group of plants that have like a lot. So you got your cauliflowers, you got your broccoli, you got your cabbages, you got your Brussels sprouts. Really interesting fact is they're all kind of, they all originate as the same plant. They just focus on growing different things from flowers to 
whatever. So look, they just, they're interesting. And the big thing that's pest pressure wise for these ones is the dreaded cabbage moth, which is not a moth, it's a butterfly. Um, but those butterflies are getting ready to start migrating and going into their dormant period because it's starting to get cool. So I've actually seen, um, well, one, we had a hurricane, but even right before the hurricane, I was starting to see kind of a lowering of the amount of butterflies because the butterflies are starting to migrate. The monarchs are migrating. And if you don't know within Florida, um, we have a lot of migrating butterflies that come to Florida or they come through Florida on their way down to like the Caribbean and South America and Mexico. So um, <laughs> if you're worried, that's why these are great for us to grow in the cooler months is because the great Southern white butterfly and the checkered white butterfly, all of our white butterflies, those are the ones that everyone calls cabbage moths they're not moths they're cat they're actually butterflies and they're what eat your brassicas so they are getting ready to start heading south or go dormant right now so this would be a good time to start these but watch the weather because if it stays a little warm they'll hang out a little longer but seed start and then maybe consider putting like um netting until we kind of the white butterflies have kind of moved on but it's a great time of year for brassicas so carrot starting, this is a great time of year to start carrots. I started some in a bed about a month ago and they seem to be kind of coming along. I'm very watchful because I've been having a lot of black swallowtails in my garden, which from a butterfly gardening perspective has been like, yay. But from a carrot perspective, it's like, well, don't eat them yet. Like you can have some once they're bigger. So you can also start some carrots right now. And, and, and friendly reminder, because I, I put a note for myself in my book, strawberries time for strawberries. It's this month and then November. We've got time for getting strawberries. Now the question I've had from people, right, because strawberries and buying strawberry starts and all that jazz. When you live up north, there's lots and lots of resources. But right now, like who's growing strawberries in the country? Nobody. Nobody's growing strawberries. So a lot of y'all were asking like, well, where are you going to get your strawberries? And my answer was, I don't, I don't know. I've never bought them from four. I've only like, I got my one that's there from springtime, which actually it went through the whole summer. I mean, it didn't produce, but the plant lived, which is a cool thing. So I've been looking around trying to find some places for uh, strawberry starts. I did find a company for Florida that was like making starts for us October, November time period, but they're sold out. Oh my gosh. So I've been looking around and around. So what the best place that I can find right now that has starts that kind of available for anyone who's watching this channel is on Amazon. So I've been looking at a couple different varieties um, and I've been reading all the reviews and I've been looking for people, like what I typed into Amazon was uh, strawberry plants for Florida. That's what I'm searching on Amazon. So that helps you out. That's what I've been looking for. What we don't want is something that's like great for Maine or Washington state. We want something that's gonna be working well with our heat, our humidity, right? Even though I, for us, it's not as hot and humid in the scheme of like strawberries, this is still warm and it's still humid and we still do have pest pressure. So like what works really well. So there are some varieties out there that seem to be really well reviewed. So I'm gonna be ordering those to get ready to go put into my garden because I'm excited. I wanna try doing some strawberries this year. So remember to go and get yourself some strawberry starts. And some other things that you should be considering for the month of October is, well, as much as the hurricane has passed, and I know a lot of us have hustled to really get a lot of work done, um, I know I still have a bunch of cleanup from pruning back loofahs. Um, I'm watching my uh, Puerto Rican black beans. It looks like they're stressed, but I don't know if that's just from the wind or is that because the temperatures have gotten cooler. Um, so right now is the time to consider, is it time to start taking out our summer crops? Which ones are looking okay and have some time to finish and which ones we just need to get out of the way for the warm weather crops that we've already planted in August, September, or to make way for, you know, cold weather crops. Cause you know, cold weather crops, the nice thing about them is they're typically pretty fast other than like your brassicas, uh, your beets, your radishes. Oh, did I mention you can grow radishes too right now? But a lot of those plants, um, you're going to be able to get faster yields and then you can kind of do succession planting if you want, where you plant some and then a few weeks later plant some and then a few weeks later plant some. So, you know, making way for kind of these faster turnaround crops would be a really good idea, especially when you kind of aren't getting a lot happening from your warm weather crops, warm weather, hot weather crops, like your okras and stuff like that, because they're, they're going to start slowing down, but some aren't. So you're going to want to watch some of that. So consider what should be pruned, what do you need to get out of the way? Of course, if you still got like debris all over your garden, which would not be unusual at this point, you know, focus on getting that cleaned up so that you, you can get yourself back to a, a good feeling spot. I mean, cause that's one of the things is our gardens are here to help us bring joy. They're supposed to be productive, but they're also bringing joy. So 
if you need to still do some cleanup, make sure you clean up. Um, and another thing to think about was one of the ones I'm going to be thinking about for this month, besides pruning and cleaning up, um, I'm going to be doing some amending in my soil. I'm probably going to be using things like bananas and the ashes that I used when I was burning off some of the yard scraps. So I can just, you know, slowly add some nutrition back into the area. So something to think about, especially after we've gone through some pretty, uh, hard times and some of the plants might need some freshening up. Another thing you may want to consider, depending on how much moisture you got throughout this whole time period, is, you know, do you want to start opening up stuff so that they can breathe a little bit better? Because if there has been a lot of moisture right where we got more propensity for mold and mildew and all those kind of things, even though the humidity is down. For me, it's way down. I don't know about y'all, but it's way down. But some of the stuff is looking not so cute. Very, very stressed. And especially like with our herbaceous, you know, tropical plants, they may be very dense right now. So opening them back up so that we can get airflow right now would be a helpful thing. And when it comes to your crops that you already have in the ground, one of the watch outs right now in certain areas of Florida that I'm noticing is that the ones of us who did not get the deluges and the flooding and all that, um, we're not getting any rain. And it has dry, it went from absolute monsoons throughout mid September to like, where's the rain? So just be mindful um, if you don't have irrigation equipment, whether you need to be watering these is not because it has gotten a lot, the humidity's dropped, we're drying out pretty fast. So something to monitor if you're not like in a swamp right now. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly take you around. We're gonna talk about things that may have potential for harvest this coming month so that you can be reminded of things. Or if you're getting inspired for next year, then what you can do is think about the things if you wanna spread out your harvest throughout the year. So let's go take a look. So here we are at the middle beginning of October and we should be getting some of our first papayas before the end of the month. Some of these lower ones are getting big enough that I think, I think these should be starting to come in by the end of the month. So papaya will be on its way. These ones, if you remember, I planted, I think in June, they were transplants from another part of my yard. And so here we are just a few months later and look at that. So we should be starting to get the beginnings of papaya harvest. So over here, well, my loofah is looking not happy, but you can see there actually is loofah hanging out here. This is huge. <laughs> this is like huge, huge. What is this? Almost like two feet long right now. So we do have some loofah hiding throughout here that I have seen. Where was some other ones? Oh, here's a little one. I don't know if that one's gonna, I think that came around during the storm. So I don't know if that one's gonna actually survive. But we have another one hanging down here so i need to figure out what i'm going to do with some of these because i'm kind of blocked off from my tunnel here so we'll have to figure this out was there any other ones in here oh yeah there's some over here too look over here so we've got some big ones here oh and another one okay so we may have some more stuff in october definitely have more beans i can be getting i haven't done any harvesting post hurricane because we've been too busy trying to <laughs> get everything back to normal. So I've got more beans that I'll definitely be harvesting throughout October. Um, like I was saying though, this is, let's see, let me find some of the leaves. But you can see some of these leaves, they're looking very stressed. But like I said, I don't know if this is hurricane or if this is just the fact that it's cooling down. I'll just be monitoring them. But I've got, but because this has kind of all gotten ripped apart, I can actually see the beans a little bit better than I could before. Before this is just a mess to try to get through. And then over here, my okra is still producing a little bit. Ugh, I missed harvesting this one, but there'll be a couple little ones here. Um, but I'm kind of at the point of like, does it stay? Does it go? We'll be considering that over this month of just maybe having this guy get out of here. But below, we definitely have cubanelles that are forming that were small and itty bitties right before the hurricane. So I will let them harv. I will be harvesting these this month. You can see more. And these are actually off the pepper plants that I prune. This one over here is the one I didn't prune. And it's got a little bit of peppers, but it's more of the ones I pruned that are flowering pretty well. So good tip from Maggie about giving it a hard prune. We got some more Tabasco here. And we can see other pepper plants I overpaid for. <laughs> these are the transplants from Home Depots and Lowe's. We've got flowers on them. They are getting ready to put out fruit. They've already put out some fruit. So I'll expect some, a pretty decent pepper harvest. We have green onions that were planted in the winter or spring of this year. It has been a while. 
and they are just hanging out. So I look forward to some pretty decent pepper harvest in October. Lots and lots of flowering, lots of good stuff going on there. Now, there, are been, there have been some Everglades tomatoes hiding and popping up from here and there, but overall, our tomato plants have done really well. I don't know that I'm gonna get any harvest in the month of October. I'll expect more of it come November. And then over here, there comes the sweet potatoes bouncing back. I do not think I'll be harvesting any sweet potatoes come October. Definitely November is what I'm thinking. Over here, I need to clear out the last of these cabbages. I may get some peppers off of this plant, but you can see we got some beets here. So I might have some beet greens in October. And yeah, I just need to get rid of these cabbages. They are so tired, so old, but you know what? We can reseed some things, but we can see that there are carrots popping up here and there and everywhere. Carrots. So, oh, more carrots popping up. So there we go. Now over here we have the lettuces. They're doing great. I have not seen any spinach. I have seeded this multiple times. No spinach, none at all. Is this spinach? Are you spinach? Maybe these are spinach. I don't know. We'll watch. But for as many seeds as I put in here, it is not producing. But the lettuce is doing okay. And then the radishes over here. We got some radishes. So maybe there'll be some radish harvest. I don't know how fast radishes grow. So maybe something will be happening there. And what we will not be harvesting, but we are so happy that survived will be bananas. Look at these banana racks. I am super, super excited. So I expect these to be ready maybe November time period. And then over here, I'm expecting this to drop probably a banana in October or early November. So that'll make up for the rack that we lost. All these small ones, I'm not gonna worry about harvesting them. They take way too much time for me to process. Um, but I will be focused on this one. This one, late October, early November. That's what I'm thinking. So it's one or the other. I'll be watching this one. So we might have it for this month, maybe next month. The other question will be with all the defoliation and stress that the mulberries went through, will they set new fruit? They may. They got beat up pretty good by the storm. And I'm wondering if they are going to take that as a stress signal. And maybe they will actually go ahead and... uh put out new fruit. Now, one of the things is when y'all was saying that I should hang this rack of bananas up and it might still produce fruit. I don't know that it will. This is pretty shrimpy, wimpy, skimpy, but you know what? It's intact. So I may take it and I may hang it up per, per recommendation. So I hope this got you inspired so that you can get yourself back on track after the mess that was September. And if you need help with what to grow and when to grow it, go ahead and get your free seasonal gardening calendar at www.wildfloridian.net slash calendar. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!